Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai in India. Today I am going to talk about a condition which may be familiar to most clinicians, but its pathogenesis may not be that well known. It's a condition called keratinoderm. A good review of this condition can be found in the International Journal of Dermatology, March 2003, written by three Israeli doctors. Keratinoderma is a phenomenon characterized by orange pigmentation of the skin, resulting from carotene deposition, mainly in the stratum corneum, the outermost layer of the skin. It is a harmless condition. There are many causes for this phenomenon. High beta carotene intake, metabolic states like hypothyroidism, diabetes, and uh, anorexia nervosa and so on. Historically, von Norden described the condition first in 1907. One year later, Morrow noted it in infants. The term keratinemia was coined by Hess and Mayers in 1919 to describe the condition consisting of increased carotene blood level and yellow skin pigmentation. Epidemics of keratinoderma occurred during World War II due to strict rationing of food, forcing people to consume large amounts of carrots. Some lactating women transferred the condition to their infants through breast milk. It is endemic in West Africa due to the liberal use of red palm oil which is rich in carotenoids. Metabolism. Carotenoids are found as a complex with proteins. Beta carotene is not synthesized in the human body. It is therefore obtained mainly from food, mainly fruits and vegetables. Only about one third of ingested beta carotene is absorbed. In the presence of bile acids, it is absorbed by passive diffusion into the enterocytes in the small intestine mucosa where it is converted to retinol. Retinol reductase then converts retinol to vitamin A which is then transferred to the liver as chylomicrons. Beta carotene is stored in the liver and adipose tissue and is found in high concentration in the testis and in the adrenals. Excretion of beta carotene occurs mainly via the colon and the epidermis through the sebaceous secretions. A small amount is excreted through the urine. Carotinoderma may be observed four to seven weeks after high carotene intake. However, high the beta carotene may be, fortunately, it does not lead to hypervitaminosis A, which as we all know has serious side effects. Keratinemia in anorexia nervosa is mainly caused by food fads, excess intake of low energy yellow vegetables. In hypothyroidism and in liver disease, there is impaired conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A. In renal disease, there is poor elimination of beta carotene. In a rare inborn error of metabolism, there is deficiency of deoxygenase. This leads to beta carotene accumulation. The high levels of beta carotene in Alzheimer's disease may be due to poor conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A. The clinical features, the yellow color of beta carotene becomes apparent when its serum concentration exceeds 250 microgram per dl. It is mainly deposited in stratum corneum as mentioned already, in sweat and in sebum. And so the yellow color is prominent in the nasolabial folds, the palms and, and the soles. The whole body may become yellow except the sclerae which helps to differentiate it from jaundice. Yet another typical sign of keratinoderma is its enhanced appearance under artificial light. 
Differential diagnosis, of course, the first and most important is jaundice. And besides involving the sclerae, in jaundice, the patients have constitutional symptoms like weakness, etc. Secondly, lycopenemia. Lycopenemia is a physiologically inert isomer of carotenoid that is not converted into vitamin A in the body. It is found in tomatoes and bitter wort berries. Its metabolism is similar to beta carotene. The skin here is deeper than that due to carotenoderma. And in addition to palms and soles, this yellow pigment is seen on the palate. But once again, the sclerae was spared. And to differentiate between carotenoderma and lycopenemia, one has to resort to spectrophotometry. Third differential is drugs and chemicals. Yellow pigmentation can be caused by mepacrine, quinacrine, saffron, picric acid, and acriflavin. What harm does catechinemia do to the human body? According to many, none. But a few authors believe that it may be associated with weakness, weight loss, hypertension, and uh, amenorrhea. But it is universally agreed that keratinemia does not lead to hypervitaminosis A. Management. The diet-induced keratinoderma is easily managed by just following a low beta-carotene diet. Within a few months, the level comes down to normal. For the metabolic keratinemia, there is no satisfactory treatment. Though a harmless condition, the importance lies in avoiding unnecessary investigation for jaundice. Finally, a word about beta carotene in therapy. Beta carotene is a strong antioxidant and is also a free radical scavenger. So it was first used in photodermatosis, especially erythropoietic protoporphyria, EPP, first described by Ian Magnus in London in the early 1960s when I was doing my post-graduation in the UK. Patients were asked to drink 8 to 10 glasses of carrot juice per day. After 7 to 8 weeks, the skin turned yellow. And at this point, these patients were able to expose the skin to direct sunlight without getting sunburned. They were happy about this skin sun tolerance, but they were unhappy because they were mistaken to be Chinese citizens. Those who were sick of drinking loads of carrot juice and tomato juice were given capsules of solan tea, which is beta carotene capsules, 25 milligrams each, about 6 to 8 capsules per day. The other photodermatose conditions, beta carotene was ineffective, as also in various cancers and cardiovascular disease where it was tried for its antioxidant properties. So, though keratinoderma is rare and is of no serious import, it is nevertheless important in the differential diagnosis of jaundice. Thank you.